used by pest control companies. Did you poison that? Four new programmes for your Wednesday evening on HTV. Hello again. I mentioned Night Network at the top of the break. I forgot to say that Emma Freud will be talking to Eartha Kitt in her pillow talk. There are also a look at new cinema releases, and one of them, I'm sure, will be Death of a Salesman. Playing Willie Lomas, quite a challenge for Dustin Hoffman, one of the guests with Mike Aspel. <laughs> Thank you, and good evening. Just as you thought it was safe to switch on again, we're back with another series. On this, the day that celebrates the birth of Alan Ladd, the death of Oliver Cromwell, and the outbreak of World War II. This evening's show should be a little less dramatic, although we start the series in impressive company. My guests are a one-time attendant in a psychiatric home, a former teacher, and a man who once scraped a living demonstrating potato peelers. That was several months ago, of course. They've since become known for other things, like winning Oscars, as in the case of Dustin Hoffman, for selling many millions of records, as in the case of Sting. And as for the man with the potato peeler, well, he grew up to be one of the most perceptive and amusing observers of his fellow man. Ladies and gentlemen, Dave Allen. <laughs> We haven't seen you for a while, Dave. Where have you been? Touring. Really. A travelling man. Are you, are you getting a... greyer. Getting greyer. Who? You and I. I've just come back from holiday. It's blonde. It's the sun. <laughs> I'm losing it, too. Oh, really? Hard yeah. hmm. <laughs> It's Friction. Are you? Yes. <laughs> are you a good traveller? Um, I used to be. I'm beginning, I'm beginning to hate it now, actually. I, I don't like... Um, there are certain things I don't like about traveling. I don't like airports to start with, because it's, uh, there are certain things about airports which I find very uncomfortable. The seats. They don't really want you to be comfortable in airports. You ever sit, sit down, you always slide. Mm. After about two minutes, you slide. So you get up and you walk around and you buy a paper that you don't want and you buy a coffee that you don't want. <laughs> And you buy a drink to get rid of the coffee taste. <laughs> and then you get pissed and they won't let you on the plane. <laughs> but, I mean, I just, I mean, the first, you, you sit on a plane, the first thing the hostess does, she, it appears that she's talking about the doors, but I, always, I actually think she's giving me a blessing. You sit in the plane, first thing they do is say, they lock you in, strap up, and then she goes. <laughs> that's it, that's it. I mean, even the Pope, you've seen the Pope get off the plane. First thing he does is kiss the ground. <laughs> Thank Christ, it's finished. <laughs> People get odd on airplanes. There's no doubt about it. They, they get strange. They do things on airplanes they never dream of doing anywhere else. And I sat and watched this man in front of me, and I knew that somewhere along the line he was going to goose the hostess. <laughs> I, knew, I knew it. I mean, it was just every time she would come close, his hand would it would <laughs> just go off on its own. And at one point, she was ducking down to pick up some food or whatever it might be, and he just he just went ah. <laughs> And she straightened up, and as she straightened up, she hit her head off one of the trolley bays. And I thought, you've had it, sir. You're going to get soup on you, you're going to get coffee, you're going to get drink, you're going to get vomit, everything's going to be poured <laughs> on you straight up. Nothing happened at all. And we were about 15 minutes out of Sydney, and we were told that we were landing in 15 minutes, and I'm going to stand up here. And he's, the man stood up, he went, Ugh! And he stepped out into the aisle, and he tipped his toes. And the hostess came from nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> this man was practically through the front of the jungle. Probably a regular travel, that was his usual. Yeah. But there, I mean, there's, there's, there's humor in there. I mean, for example, words like, words like fart. People... <laughs> I mean, I, I think, here's a very good word. It, is, it describes what it is. I mean, if somebody comes up to you and says, I had a touch of flatulence. You think, 
You fart it. <laughs> you need to think it. Now, my grandmother used to say, whose bottom coughed? <laughs> Isn't that absurd? Mm. So I'm in, I'm in New Zealand, and I have friends of mine, and I'm a goddaughter to this little child, and she's walking across the thing. And her father said, did you whisper? <laughs> and I said, I, did she say, what did she say? He said, no, no, whisper is a euphemism for a fuck. <laughs> whisper. And I thought, to actually say this to a child, whisper, whisper means fart. And then one day somebody's going to say to the child, come and whisper in my ear. <laughs> in the world has made people laugh. Mm. It is, farting has made more people laugh. <laughs> I mean, we've all done it. I mean, we've all laid in bed with the woman we love and adore, <laughs> and we've all felt that fart coming on. <laughs> and hold on to her, you say, I love you, you're wonderful. Am I? Yes, you are, you really are. And all the time, you're grabbing the blankets and you're pulling them closer and closer. And a split second before you fart, you cover her head. Good to her. It is the most laughable subject. School, I mean, to fart in a classroom. I was educated by the priests, and there was silence. There was never any noise in the classroom. All you would hear is a scratch of pens. And you'd hear... <laughs> All the desk lids would go up immediately. I don't know where you're shifting buttocks now. No, well, that's the trouble with these leather things. But I was in, I mean, recently, I, was, I live in Kensington. And on the corner of Kensington Heights... They fart there. Yes, it's a long way out. But with an Oxford accent. <laughs> Gentle accent. And there's this flower seller on the corner of Church Street in Kensington Heights. And I was waiting to buy some flowers. And he had some wonderful, wonderful lilies. Stunning white lilies. And I was standing there looking at them. And I thought, I'll just go forward and I'll smell them. So I'm going to stand up again because I have to stand up to them. So I go over to the flowers like that, and I go... And as I go, I fart. <laughs> and I didn't even like it. <laughs> and I went, oh, Christ. And I, I backed away to where I'd been standing before it. And about three seconds later, this woman comes in, and she goes... <laughs> <laughs> would never buy a flower from that man in a million. <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes later, that was a deadly one, yes. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, you're walking down the street every day, there's ammunition there for your... I don't know, I mean, there's all... I mean, there, there are things that, that you, I would question. I mean, I don't mean question, but I, I think... I, mean, I, I, I see an odd shoe lying on the ground. I, I, I think, where, where's it come from? How does a shoe get there? And they're not bad shoes, they're generally reasonably good shoes. You see a pair of trousers lying in the street. <laughs> <laughs> There are, I, I get agitated by, by certain things like notices. They, they annoy me because I look at them. I mean, when I was in uh, Edinburgh, I went by a mortuary, which actually had dead slow. <laughs> I don't, I don't think like Nothing then is sacred. I mean, certainly the sacred is not sacred. <laughs> I, 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 I recently did a radio show with a nun called Lavinia Byrne, who's written a book called uh, Women Before God, which is a very good, solid, interesting book. But she, she was telling me a story um, about the Sisters of Mercy in New York who are finding it hard to survive because they survive totally on donations and charity. And they, they have a place in the dock area, in the red light area, and they help the ladies of the night and drunks and derelicts in general. And one nun, as a suggestion, as a joke, said, wouldn't it be fun to to put a red light outside the convent to see what, what they would attract. So they, they thought, yes, so they, they put a discreet red light outside the convent, and they stationed one of the nuns in the corridor. And about two hours later, the door opened, and a man says, oh, how much? And the nun said, $200. $200? What the point am I going to get for $200? She said, well, you're going to have a sister of mercy. That's quite different. So we put down the $200, and she said, you go past the chapel, up the stairs, turn left, call it up, go through a door there. So he did. Open the door, found himself back out in the street. And the door was self-locking. 
And he turns around and he's kicking the crap out of the door and written on the door is a notice which says, you have just been screwed by the Sisters of Mercy. <laughs> Time now, if you want to, clear your bowels. We'll be back in just a moment <laughs> with Sting. In Chile, it's called.